of a little subject here that uh, I've, I know I've touched on before, and uh, I think we all should pretty much know this, but uh, if you don't, maybe it'll give you some, some notes to go by, and, and each and every one of us, uh, we always need extra scriptures all the time to help us uh, when we're witnessing, yeah, and to refresh our memory, uh, but uh, tonight, you know, we are all, the Church of Jesus Christ is supposed to teach and preach the same thing. Amen. Amen. And that is from God himself. Amen. We are supposed to be all on the same page, if you will. We are all supposed to be like-minded, one mind, one accord. Amen. Amen. And uh, especially, you know, all our main points of doctrine, which is all, is, the whole Bible is doctrine. We are supposed to teach and preach the same thing. And there's many, many scriptures that tell us this. Uh, this he does. But I'm going to start tonight in the verse, uh, book of First Corinthians. And we'll get right into the Bible lesson today. But we are supposed to, again, teach and preach the same thing. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 10, I'm going to start. He says, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you. Well, we close the Bible, Bible lesson's over, we're good for today. If ever we could just use one verse of scripture, there it is right there. I beseech you, by the name, even invoke the name of Jesus Christ, that we all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you. No divisions. We aren't all going to agree on everything that we do in life, and the Bible does teach us, you know, that we have, may have our own uh, things that we may not like or want to do. Uh, I know one thing that came to mind when I was studying, Brother Randall said that... Uh, there was a time when people thought that drinking coffee was sin. Well, it's not a sin, but if it bothers somebody, then I'll just stay away from it, and I won't do it around you. But we are, there's not supposed to be division in the church. No. Amen? In the congregations, anywhere. Whether it be here, another country, another state, we are all supposed to teach and preach the same thing. And he says, I don't want there to be any division. And I remember I heard somebody say one time that, I don't know how it's going to be in heaven if there's going to be one group over here, this group over here, this group's going to be over here, this denomination is going to be over here. Uh, now, I don't think so, brother. it's easy for me to say this now. It might not have been 15 years ago, but if God doesn't want division here on earth, right. why is there going to be division in heaven? Amen. Amen. And he's going to have different denominations in different places of, of heaven. No, I mean, that does, does not make any sense to me. Now, again, 15, 20 years ago, this was something I had a hard time with. I mean, it was something that uh, I just couldn't understand. And in my fleshly mind and my fleshly thinking, and we'll get to some scriptures that say that you're carnal-minded when, when we think like this. This is a fleshly mind to think that you know, it, it, it really doesn't matter that this group is going to be okay, this group's going to be okay. We have to go by the one book, the Bible that God left us, the road map to make it to heaven. Amen? That he does not want there to be division. He doesn't want one group saying this, one group saying that, another group saying you can go this way, another group saying you can go that way. Then we would have a God who is a respecter of persons. Because if my dad could go one way, but i got to go another way that might be more difficult, well, I guess, well, Lord, that's not fair. Yeah. Well, see, God is fair. Yeah. God is just. Amen. Amen. And he wants us all. He, and he made one way for us to make it. Yeah. And it's not a hard way. I say it many, many times. Uh, I used to think it was, but it's really not. When your heart's right with God, when your heart turns to God, these things do not become difficult they become easier now we'll have our 
trials. We'll have our things along the way that uh, may uh, try to hinder us and come against us. But when it's all said and done, it's not that hard. Amen? Now, I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Yeah. Now, again, very plain. Taking after my pastor, he would say, this doesn't take six months of praying and fasting and thinking and... Uh, Asking the Lord to help me understand this. This is very simple, very plain. No division whatsoever, none. We want us to be in the same mind, the same judgment. So, for it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. And this is nothing new. There's always been contention. There always will be. Uh, the devil's out to sow discord. Amen. He's out there to divide. Uh, as we would say, even our country, united we stand, divided we fall. One way to get to people, one way to get to the church is to divide them and get them uh, arguing amongst each other. And it doesn't matter what subject it is, doesn't matter what law it might be out in the country, if you can get people separated and arguing amongst themselves amen you you can win your battle and the devil has learned that he knows that he, he from the beginning changing one one of god's words amen and look what happened so now this i say that every every one of you saith i am of paul and i of apollos and I have Cephas, and I have Christ. Is Christ divided? No. Jesus Christ is not divided. Amen. Amen, but we have. Men <laughs> and women of the world have divided him up. Amen. Now, I'm of this person, I'm of that person, I'm of this denomination, of that one. Right. No, that's causing contentions. That's uh, causing people to fall away, causing people to not know what to think, not know what to do, who to believe, what to believe. Uh -huh. And I was one of those that was in that kind of a position. I didn't know who to believe. Everybody says they have the truth. Uh, <laughs> but as Brother Randall always says, from the time I come in, there can only be one. And it makes so much sense now, but then it was very hard to hard for me to see it really was uh, but thank God that now I can see this and hopefully we all see it hopefully we all understand this and uh, we can help one another we can help our family our friends co-workers whoever we may uh, come in contact with that uh, we can use these scriptures to show them God is not divided Amen. Man is divided. But from the start, he said, I want there to be no division. None. Is Christ divided? <clears throat> Excuse me. Verse 13. Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? No. Christ died for us. Yes. We're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. It's his church. It's his he said, upon this rock, I will build my church. Yes. Amen. And we go all the way back. Even we all know this. Go back even to the Old Testament when he started the tabernacle and then the temple. It was a place that he chose to put his name. Yes. It's his. So it's not mine. I have no right or no authority to put anybody's name on there. Not Paul's, not James, and not any of them. Amen. And I believe, like many others have said, if they were to see their name on these buildings, that they would not be happy with it. He said, I thank God that I baptized none of you, but Crispus and Gaius, lest any should say that I baptized in my own name. Paul said, 
I'm glad I didn't baptize anybody. Amen? Amen. But he said there should be no division. We shouldn't be calling ourselves by different names, different denominations. When we are baptized into Christ, we put on Christ. So I, Brother Randall, I think, said it not that long ago. I am the church of Jesus Christ. And that's it. Nothing added, nothing taken away. I'm just the church. Amen. And we all need to be in one mind, one accord, the same judgment, judging the same way, looking at things the same way. Amen. The salvation is the same. Amen. It doesn't change uh, for any one of us. It didn't change uh, from the Jews to the Gentiles when he moved on, cut off the Jews, and went to the Gentiles. They had to be done the exact same way. Now let's go to John chapter 10. And just a few verses uh, here. We'll start at 14. John 10 and 14. It says, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep. And am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. He's talking to his people. Amen. To the Israelites, to the Jews. Other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice. And thank God. He brought us in, amen, and we were able to hear his voice now. We're able to get to him, amen, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Not just one congregation, but there's just going to be one fold. There's one church, his, one shepherd, and that's him. He's the the great shepherd, amen. He started this. He said there's going to be others. There's others out there, and I'm going to bring them in. But guess what? He didn't start a different one. He didn't start a new fold for them. Amen. We're all of the same one. He said, I'm going to bring them in. There's going to be one fold and one shepherd. Uh, I can't remember who it is, but there's somebody out there teaching that, uh, you know, the Jews have their own ways and the Gentiles have their way to go. That they don't have to do the same things that we have to do. Well, God came to them first. Amen. On the day of Pentecost, that's all it was. It was the feast of Pentecost for the Jewish people. That They all came to Jerusalem for that feast when he started the church. And then when Cornelius was the first Gentile to be brought in, and they went the exact same way. Because the Jewish people were just stunned that they were speaking in tongues. And he commanded they were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So there's only one way. Again, it's hard sometimes for this fleshly mind to understand and to think that way. But we have to get it in there. We have to understand that God made one way. One way for everybody to be able to make it. There's one fold. There's one shepherd. Amen. There's one doctrine. There's one Bible. Amen. The Bible says that there's one God and Father of all. He said there's one Lord, one faith. One baptism. There's only one way for us to be able to make it. Amen. And thank God he did that. Amen. Thank God he made it that way. Again, like I said earlier, who, how would you feel if you know, God made it real easy for this one, but well, it's going to be more difficult for you? No. No, we all have to come the same way. And thank the Lord that somebody like me who was out there didn't know a thing, uh, wasn't raised around the church, didn't know anything about the Bible. And some in here who have been raised around it, been around it their whole life, known who God was, known his name their entire life. We still have to do the same thing to be able to make it to heaven. Amen. Now that's a God that's fair. That's a God that's just. Yes. Amen. That's a God who loves everybody the same. Yes. To say that, hey, this is the way you got to go. This is the way you got to do it. 
we got to get out of the fleshly way of thinking that, well, they're close. And that's a hard one. <laughs> it's still a hard one. We all want, I mean, everybody, I don't know if, if anybody who believes in God, believes in heaven, believes in hell, I don't think anybody wants anybody to go to hell. And it's hard for this flesh to think, but there's, it's close. They'll be all right. Now, I'm not the judge. And I don't know what God will say to anybody on the day of judgment. But when we have the scriptures and we dig into these scriptures, he said, I want no division. I want you all to teach and preach the same thing. I want you to all uh, have the same judgment, the same to be in one mind, one accord. So it's hard for this flesh to think otherwise. And it should be, because we should have a desire. And that should give us more of a, a desire to want to know the truth, to be able to help people and say, hey, no, this is what the Bible says. This is not what I say. This is not what I think. You know, I'm not trying to condemn you. I'm not trying to put you down. I'm not trying to make you any lower. We're the same. I'm just dust of the earth too. But this is what the scriptures say. This is what God wants. This is his desire. And if you desire to please him and you love him, what does he say? Keep my commandments. And these are the commandments. And they're not grievous. They're not hard. We make them hard. But he said, I got one fold. One fold, one shepherd. Again, I mean, the, just those few scriptures, we could finish the Bible lesson. Sure. Sure. We're really good. And just that one, I beseech you. And you, there's nothing to stand on. That's right, there's nothing to argue with that. It's right there, plain. Plain as day. I'm not going to go there, but uh, in Psalm 133, you know, it says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. How good, how pleasant. It even goes on a little bit. It's, just, it's precious, like the ointment, like the, uh, the oil that ran down uh, Aaron's beard. And he thinks of that as being very precious, very... Uh, something that he looks upon as being good for us to dwell together in unity. Not to be arguing, not to be fighting all the time. The Bible says not with, we're not even supposed to argue and put strife and, uh, against these words, against things that are of no profit. Amen. We're supposed to sit down and reason together. We're supposed to look into these scriptures and come to an agreement on things. Not always looking to find something that goes against what you're trying to say. If I don't understand it, I'm just going to leave it alone until I do understand it. Right. Amen. And that's what a lot of people aren't doing. And they're so worried about trying to find something new, so worried about trying to find something to make themselves look good, that they're, you know, some great man of God or this or that. And I'm sure every minister has probably struggled with that. Wanting something different, wanting something to find something in there, to dig in there a little bit deeper. And God just keeps saying, oh, here, bring this. Well, I've already brought that before. I've already done that before. I don't care. I don't care what you think. or what. And I had trouble even with this because I know I've touched on it before. But it doesn't matter what I want, what I think. What does God want brought? Amen. It might be the same thing over and over and over again. But if it helps somebody, if it strengthens us, if it gets us a little bit farther into the word, a little bit farther into our life, a little bit closer to heaven, then what does it matter? That's what God wanted for tonight, not me. Amen. We got to get and people out there in the world. They got to get out of that mentality of trying to find something different. I don't want something different. I want the same thing. I want to I want to be fed with the same thing and reminded over and over again what I need to do and how to do it so that I can be right. I don't want to be lulled to sleep and trying to constantly think of something new, something different, and I've left these other things behind and I'm not doing those anymore. No. I want to make sure that I'm ready. 
Amen? So we got to not think that way. Not be in that kind of mindset where, oh, I've heard this. I've heard that. And I'm sure some of you have been in church for a long time. You've heard many, many messages and heard the same thing preached over and over again. But guess what? Sometimes it can be brought in a little different way. There might be a little piece in there that we never saw before. Amen? It happens to me, and I haven't been in there that long. Uh, the same message by a different person. And it gives just a little bit deeper meaning. A little bit more in that scripture that I never saw. Amen? Or maybe, maybe I did see it, but yet, hey, I forgot about it. And the Lord's trying to wake me up. Hey, wake up. Get back over here. Yeah, stir up that gift. Amen. That's in you. Amen. We need to be stirred up. We need to be ready to meet him every single day. Amen. But we got to remember, too, that God just made one way for us to go. Get in there and do the best that we can and continue and try to bring somebody with us. I think that was all of that one. There should be one fold, one shepherd. Let's go. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians. I'm going to go there. We'll go to chapter 3. We'll start at verse 1. 1 Corinthians 3 and 1. Says, and I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you are not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able. For you are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are you not carnal and walk as men? For while one saith, I am a Paul, another, I am a Paulus, are you not carnal? Carnal-minded, carnal fleshly-minded, thinking uh, in the flesh. They said there's divisions, there, there's uh, strife among you, there's envying, envying one another. That shouldn't be in the church. He says, I can't even move on to the, to the meat of this. You're not even ready because you're still thinking carnally. And we've got to get out of the carnal mind. Got to get out of that carnal thinking and fleshly thinking so that we can be fed with the deep things of God. Who then is Paul and who is Apollos but ministers by whom you believed, even as the Lord gave to every man? I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. See, it doesn't matter who water, who planted. The minister really doesn't matter too much what he's saying. It's God that matters. God who brings the increase. We just need to be what God wants us to be. Am I the one that's got to water? Am I the one that plants? Amen. It doesn't matter who I am or where I am. Again, the message that God might give, it doesn't matter if it's been brought. Amen? Quit thinking like that. That's how the flesh thinks. That's how carnal man thinks. Is who, who am I? Who is this one? Oh, I, I heard it from Paul. Well, I heard it from Apollos. I heard it from Christ himself. He said, it doesn't matter. It's all the same thing. It's all coming from the same person. So that part shouldn't matter. Amen? As long as we're uh, in the church and we're ready... It shouldn't matter. Amen. And we got to start thinking like that and believing like that. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. So for ye are labor, we are laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry, ye are God's building. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed 
how he buildeth thereon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. And I think I touched on that scripture not that long ago, talking about the foundation. There's no other foundation. There's nothing else that we can put down that hasn't already been put down. Amen? And that's where we need to start, is at that foundation, and we build there on. But he said, be careful. Take heed how you build on there. Every man, every preacher out there needs to be careful how he builds upon that foundation. And what kind of building is he building? And what is he telling the people? Amen? Because if you're leading them astray, I wouldn't want to be in that man's shoes. Amen. We are all supposed to teach and preach the same thing. Again, I'm going to be a broken record. The same thing. One mind, one accord, one judgment. Yeah. Amen. The same thing. It's, yeah. It can be so plain. But yet, our fleshly mind can hide it from us so easily. Yeah. So easily. Uh, yeah, I... I think about it often, about where I was and where I came from and how I used to think. And I thank God all the time that I don't think like that anymore. You know, where he said we put on a new man, you know, we become a new creature. I mean, my thoughts are about life and about I mean, just so many different things are a complete 180. That's not how I think anymore, and thank God for that. And I just wish that I could help others to see that. Amen. That uh, there is a way to make it to heaven. Amen. But God's made it the same for everybody. No other foundation. Amen. No other foundation. Let's go. I'm going to go. I was going to skip it, but let's go there. Ephesians chapter 4. This one's... uh, should be well known to most of us, but maybe not to some of our younger ones that are coming up. These are good scriptures for you to know, uh, especially our young people. Uh, if somebody's trying to trip you up or trying to say, uh, well, what about this group or that group or this? You can bring them to these scriptures. Now, this is what God said. This is what the Bible says. This is not what I say. Again, this is not what I think. This is what... God thinks. And we will start in verse 1. Ephesians 4 and 1. It says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Amen. Endeavoring. I mean, putting forth an effort. Trying. Amen. You know, sometimes we got to try. We got to put effort forward to be able to keep the unity. Amen. We need to work with one another, help one another, pray for one another, sit down with one another and reason with each other. And I'm talking not just here. I mean, I'm like the pastors, the bishops. Uh, Brother Randall and Brother Jim's out talking to a bunch of different people, trying to sit down with them and reason with them out of the scriptures and say, look, we're trying to get unity here. We're trying to get everybody back in one fold and speaking and teaching the same thing. What a powerhouse the church of Jesus Christ could be if even just all the oneness groups. Brother Randall has said it many times. It's just the oneness groups. But if we could get even... Uh, Some of the others, the Trinities, the sea, what it is, what a powerhouse. And things could be changed. But again, we're not going to change scripture, but we we have to try. He says endeavoring to keep the unity. We have to try. We have to get out there and try to keep this together. And if they won't, then okay, there's nothing we can do. God said to wipe the dust off your feet, shake the dust off. And we move on to the next house. Amen. But we've got to try. And we've got to have long suffering. Uh, You know, I've said this before in other messages and other uh, thoughts. But, you know, long suffering and forbearing one another. That means putting up with each other. 
putting up with each other. We all know from our own, even just family, sometimes we're, man, we're long suffering with them. We put up with them. My dad puts up with me a lot. Our brother, you know, brothers, sisters, we put up with each other for a lot of things because we're family. We're blood, right? Uh, the old saying, uh, blood's thicker than water. Well, it's not. Amen. But we put up with a lot of things for family. Because, man, that's family. Well, what are we? What are we? Are we the family of God? Are we brothers and sisters in the Lord? Amen. We've got to learn to deal with one another once in a while and put up with each other. It says, forbearing one another in love, in that godly love, knowing that there's a soul there, knowing that, uh, hey, I want them to make it to heaven too. And guess what? There's some things that you need to remember this. There might be some things about you that other people don't like. Not just you don't like about other people. I know I got some ways about me too that uh, I'm sure people don't like. Might get under your skin. We got to learn to love one another. To put up with each other. Amen. To forbear one another. To endeavor to try. We have to try to keep the unity. Try to keep the peace within the church. Within the congregations. Amen. We've got to keep that together. Until when? Until he comes back. Amen. Or he takes us. Amen. We're not part of the Bible lesson, but how many times does God say we're supposed to forgive one another? Till seven times? And he said, not till seven, until seven times seventy. And that was in a day. He said, how many times in a day do I got to forgive them? We got to forgive one another. Amen. God forgave us. Does he still forgive you? Amen. He still forgives me when I mess up, when I make a mistake. If I'll stop and repent, we still, you know, we got to, we got to keep this going. Amen. We got to keep the faith together. Amen. If nobody, if God's going to have a church, no matter what, there's going to be a church. But is it going to be this one still there? Is it going to be that one in that state, this one in this country? It's going to be up to those people, amen, to keep the unity, amen? And we have to try sometimes. <laughs> we have to put forth an effort. In verse 4, there's one body, one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling. We got one chance, one life, one hope to make it to heaven, amen? There's not going to be another one after this. Amen. There's not going to be another chance after this life. We're not going to be reincarnated. No such thing. No reincarnation. The way we go to the grave is the same way we're going to come up. Amen. We have one hope. I want to make it. And if you have to put up with me for a little bit, if you have to help me, pray for me. Pray for me. Let me know. <laughs> Amen. I, there's been times I went to Brother Randall before. Is it? Something, especially when I was seeking for the Holy Ghost, there's something I'm doing wrong because God showed you something. Yes. Amen. Let me know. I want to know. Yes. Amen. I don't want to be left here. Yes. Amen. I only got one chance at this. Amen. I've done lived 30 years for the devil, and it was, <laughs> I know now that uh, I'm not going to make it. I can't last. I can't, I can't go another day. I don't want to go another day. What if I don't make it till tomorrow? Right. Amen. We got to think like that. We got to remember, and we got to think like that for one another. Am I going to be here tomorrow? Will I be there next week? No, today's the day. Amen. I got one chance at this. There's one spirit, there's one Holy Ghost. There's not a Holy Ghost and then there's a Holy Spirit. No, there's one. There's one body, there's one church. Amen. There's many congregations, there's many members, but there's only one church. Amen. And that's what he's saying. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. We all should know this. But again, some of you younger ones, get this in your mind. The Bible says one all over the place. There's one way. There's one God, he says. There's one 
one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Amen. And Jesus Christ himself said, I am with you, but I shall be in you. Jesus Christ is God. There's only one. There's only one way of salvation. There's only one church. Amen. God designed it that way so that there's, can't, there's no division. Again, no respecter of person. He can say, I did the same thing. Amen. For Brother Gerald that he did for Brother Jay. Amen. The same thing. Thank God for that. Amen. I mean, really, how, well, I mean, we can look. I'm going to say, how difficult would it be if there were so many different ways? Look at the world. Look at the shape we're in. Look at the mess that is going on in this world. Nothing but chaos, nothing but division, amen, nothing but hate. That's not God. Amen. And even amongst Christians, there's hate towards one another. There should not be hate. Amen. There should be nothing but love for one another. Love for that soul. No, I don't love maybe the things that you're doing, and I will tell you that they're wrong, but I don't hate you. Amen. There should not be hate like there is today. Amen. Hate the evil. Hate the evil. Hate the sin that's destroying people. But there's a soul in that person. Amen. We got to show that love. But there's only one way to show it. Amen. Unity. We've got to stick together. We have to stay together. And that is the way God designed it. Not me. Not Brother Randall. Amen. Not, to, not even the apostles. None of them started this. They took what Christ gave them. Amen. And they've passed it on. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. Amen. And I jumped down just a little bit and he, he gave some gifts. Verse 11, he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come into unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Amen. He gave these things for us until we can all come to the same conclusion. Amen to the same conclusion. For the perfecting of the saints. He did this for each and every one of us. And he did it for everyone out there. But again, we all have to come the same way. Very true. Let's go. Let's go to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians 2, we'll read uh, verses 1 through 4. That there be, therefore, any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels of mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. It's a big problem today. That is a big problem. Amen. In, in the world, in this country, among uh, preachers, uh, among places of worship. Amen. Nothing be done through strife or vainglory. To glorify themselves, to make a name for themselves, to see their name in the lights. Oh, I want God's name in the lights. I want him to be glorified, not me. Amen. Lift it. He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. 
He's got to be lifted up. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. We need to look at one another. We need to look at each other and put each other up above ourselves. Brother Mark, I want him up above me. He's better. I want, I want to think of him as being better than me. I'm down here. But see, if he thinks the same way, then we're both going to be on the same page. We're going to be there for each other. We're going to be helping. We're going to be in the same mind. The mind of Christ. How did Christ think? Amen. He looked at each, at each and every person as a soul. And Brother Randall brought it out not that long ago, or somebody did. He looked down as he was dying and said, Father, forgive him. Even after all the things that they had done, still forgive him. We need to be able to look at somebody and say, no matter what they've done, no matter, and say, God, forgive them. Help them. Amen. Because if I don't forgive, then I won't be forgiven, the Bible says. Amen. We need to show mercy. We need to show compassion. And guess what? We'll be shown mercy. We'll be shown compassion. Does anybody in here not need it? Who needs compassion? Anybody need mercy? I need mercy. Amen. Amen. I'm in the flesh. We do make mistakes. I need God's mercy in my life. I do too, Amen. And I want it to be in your life. Amen. I want God to be merciful to each and every one of us. But we got to again go back to the other scriptures. We need to try. We need to help one another. We need to put forth an effort to help one another. Not just uh, in passing. Okay, I yeah, help them. Lord, help them. Be merciful, but not show nothing, not do nothing. That's not the mind of Christ. That's not how Christ was. That's not how he thought. That's not the actions that he did when he was here. Amen. He did everything for somebody else to the ultimate end that he gave his own life. God himself gave his own life to start this, to start the church. Yeah. And people think they don't have to go to church. Again, guilty. I was there. But it makes so much sense. God went through all that to purchase the church, to become that sacrifice so we don't have to sacrifice the animals anymore to, 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 to start the church of Jesus Christ, but we don't have to go. He don't want us to be there. Uh, but see, that's how that's, again, fleshly thinking. Yeah. And look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Yeah. We need to look out for one another. Yeah. Amen. Unity of the spirit, unity of the faith, till we all come into it. Right. And guess what? That's going to take, take a long time. Till we all, till everybody. Yeah. So that means we can't stop. Yeah. Amen. Till the Lord comes back or till he takes us. Every day we got to be thinking about somebody else. How can I help somebody else? Yeah. How can I do something for somebody else? If the opportunity's there. Amen. God said, you see somebody in need and you let them go away, knowing you have it. That's not good. Yeah. Not good. Let's see, we have just one or two more here. Let's go to 2 Timothy, chapter 2. Just got a few verses here. I will read... Let's see, verses 1 and 2, and then we'll jump down. 2 Timothy 2, 1 and 2. It says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same, the same, commit thou. Right. Well, not your version, not your thoughts, not your ways. The same commit thou, but he said not then just to any men, faithful men. 
Commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. We have to pass down the same thing. Again, over and over and over again. Sometimes it takes many, many messages of the same thing over and over again for me to, to get it, for me to understand it. It takes me a little longer maybe than some people. But he said, the things that you've seen, and in other places he said, the same things you've seen and heard in me do. Amen? And here he says, the same things that you've heard of me of many witnesses, he says, the same thing. Take that same thing and commit that to somebody else, to another faithful person, so that they can teach somebody else. And here we are almost 2,000 years later. There is the church of Jesus Christ still alive, Still saying, teaching, and preaching the same thing. Is it getting more and more difficult? It is. Because there's more and more people out there trying to say something different. But that doesn't mean we can stop. He said, till we all come into it. Amen. Amen. Now we jump down to verse 14. He said, of these things, put them in remembrance. Of what, of what things? The scriptures. Everything. He said, I would that you could... Affirm these things constantly in the church. Of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. That's all it is. Anymore. There's groups out there that just love to debate. That's all they want to do is debate scripture. Argue about it. Fight about it. Debate scripture. No, no. I don't want to debate, I don't want to argue with you. If you want to argue, then I don't even really want to sit down with you. But if you want to sit down and talk, open up the Bible and let's see what it says, okay. But he said, don't strive. He said, don't argue about these things. Words of no profit. And if it's something that really doesn't even matter, coffee thing, Chevy or Ford, don't matter. But the Word of God... Amen. The word is what we need to worry about. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And again, we don't have a lot of that. Not, not a lot of studying. Got a lot of people reading different books from different people, watching different people on TV, getting their sermons from them. No, he said study to show thyself approved. And the, this one got me early on when I was first started coming, rightly dividing. He put that in there for a reason. Rightly, so that must mean there's a wrong way. Must mean there's a wrong way to divide the word. We need to be careful how we're dividing the word of God. And again, they're not. People, have, and that's why we're in the shape that we're in. They're out there for vainglory. They're out there because they want to make a name for themselves. They want... To be somebody. Yeah. Amen. They went, oh man. That guy, he's, he really knows the word. He's always coming up with something new. Always seeing something new in the scriptures. The Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. Yeah. Amen. What's, already, what's been done has already been done. What you're going to do, somebody else is going to do later. Yeah. Just paraphrasing uh, Solomon and Ecclesiastes there. It's already been done. It's been preached. This message has been preached for 2,000 years. But if it needs to preach, be preached for 2,000 more, I want to do my part. Amen. Amen? We all just need to strive for unity. And if we only get it here, then we only get it here. But it should be in here for sure. Amen? Oh. Oh, well, just a couple more. He said, so verse 16, he said, but shun profane and vague babblings. Stay away from them. Don't go towards them. Don't worry about them. Shun them. For they will increase unto more ungodliness. And their word will eat as doth a canker of whom is Hamanius and Philetus. It's just going to make it worse and worse until eventually you're going to be out. Amen. So don't, don't worry about these things. Amen. If it's something we don't understand, something we don't, or someone wants to argue about it, we don't understand it, just stay away from it. Go ask somebody, 
Amen. Pray about it. Amen. But just stick with the word. Yes. Don't worry about nothing else. Amen. 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 I'm not going to go there, but you know, one last one. Uh, it's in Proverbs. The seven things that God hates. Oh, yeah. Amen. Seven things, and they're an abomination. And the last one, he said, he that soweth discord among brethren. God hates that. There should not be discord. There should not be division. Again, I heard the one guy say, I don't know how it'll be. This, this group here, this group there, this group will be over on that mountain. God doesn't want division on earth in this fleshly sense. There's not going to be division in heaven. And God does not like division among his people. Amen. So let's stick together. Let's stay together. Amen. Let's pray for one another. And let's try to help as many as we can along the way. Amen. Unity. Unity. United will stand. Amen. Divided, we will fall.